Welcome back. This is the second video in the Life in Half a Second Challenge. And by now you should have one posted on your social media, whether Facebook, blog, Twitter, that you're doing this challenge. And two, found a goal buddy with which you're gonna do the challenge with. And that goal buddy should have watched the first video. If you haven't done those two things, stop watching, go back to the first video, watch it again, and do those action items. Do not watch further. All right, assuming that you've got that in place, it's now time to set some goals. You know from reading the first door of success how important goals are. They actually define what success means to you at a personal level, whether that's building a business, having a career, doing what you love and getting paid for it, having a happy marriage, being a sports star, getting into show business and succeeding. Different people have different definitions of success, but we have to define them as goals. So we know that once we achieve the goal, we've achieved our definition of success, and then hopefully we set new goals. But the problem with goals is that the vast majority of the goals we set, we abandon. If you look at statistics on New Year resolutions, for example, depending on which statistic you look at, between 60 to 85% of New Year resolution goals get abandoned, right? So it's not just about having a goal, it's actually about having a goal that you care about, that you're passionate about, that you're fully committed to. So if you're an experienced goal setter, this might come very easily for you. You've had goals in the past, you've had some level of success in achieving those goals, and now you know exactly what type of goals you want for the future. But for the vast majority of people, in my experience, they're not experienced goal setters. Studies show that the minority, very few people, actually have goals and do it in a systematic way. So for those of you that are new to goal setting, you haven't uh, uh, done it on a, on a regular basis in the past, I'll give you an example of how I would do this with an entrepreneur, which I've probably done hundreds of times in various mentoring programs or in various meetings that I've had. An entrepreneur comes to me, I get to know a little bit about him or her, the business that they're involved in, um, and, and let's just call this hypothetical entrepreneur uh, John. So John comes to me, he says, Matt, you know, I, I, I want to set some goals for the business, I really want to get ahead, etc. And the typical thing that this entrepreneur will do is, John, he'll set some goals like, uh, I want to increase sales, I want to increase profit, I want to reduce my costs, I want to increase the volume of product that I sell. Those would be some typical things that, uh, that come out. And I listen to those things, and not only are they extremely vague, imprecise, you know, what does increased sales mean? Does that mean increasing sales by $5, 5%, 50%, I mean, who knows? But not only are they imprecise, they're the type of goals where I can tell the entrepreneur isn't really committed to them in the sense that if they don't happen, nothing bad is really gonna happen. The business will still be there, it will still be running along, everything will be pretty much the same. So I'm trying to find in that entrepreneur goals that John really cares about. And the way I do that is I'd say to John, you know, forget about all that. That sounds great, but forget about all of that. Talk to me about the biggest negatives that you currently have in your business or in your life, which is a completely you know, different mindset. Here he is thinking about positive things, about increasing sales, increasing profits and so forth, and I've jerked him out of that mindset and now I'm saying to John, I want you to talk to me about negatives. Tell me about the worst thing in your business. What keeps you awake at night, right? So John isn't expecting that, and, and I would do that with you. If you were an entrepreneur and we had a coffee, I'd go with, through something similar with you. And then all of a sudden John might say, you know Matt, the biggest negative that I've got in my life is that I'm working all the time. I've, I, I hardly see my kids, I hardly see uh, my spouse. Uh, I work, I feel like I'm working seven days a week. I feel like I'm in a slave trap. I feel like I'm a slave to the business. And that's my biggest negative, and I worry about it. So now we're onto something here, right? This is something that John really cares about. It's close to his heart, and what I do at that point is I try to drill down. All right, talk to me about that, John. What, why are you working so much? And he, he thinks about it, and he says, because I can't afford to hire someone to help me with some of those things. All right, drill down. Why can't you afford to hire someone? Well, because the business isn't making enough profit. Drill down, why isn't it making enough profit? 
because I'm not selling enough or what I am selling is priced in such a way where there's not enough profit being created. So now the real problem that he's got is there's actually not enough profit in the business for him to hire someone so that he can have more work-life balance and spend time with family. See, now I'm onto something. And what I try to do with John is take that thing that I've drilled down and turn it into a goal. And say, John, all right, what we really need to have as a goal is you being able to increase the profit of the business to a level that allows you to hire someone to help with your workload. And he agrees completely. And I say, how much profit do we need? Let's get specific now. Let's not say increase profit. Tell me specifically how much profit we're talking about. Do you need to make 10% more, 20% more? Do you need to make $100,000 a year more in profit for that to happen? Get to a very specific, tangible goal that addresses the thing that John really worries about and that he's trying to remove. Because what I've done is I've now created a goal for John that he's passionate about, he cares about, and he's more likely to commit to and not abandon like a New Year's resolution. Which leads us to the first action item. I want you to list the most negative things in your life, in your career, or your business. The things that really keep you awake at night. If you wake up in a cold sweat at 2 a.m., what are the things that you worry about? Could be relationships. Maybe you're fighting with your spouse and the fights are getting worse. Maybe you're not spending enough time with kids or loved ones. Maybe you're stuck in a job or a career that you're not passionate about, that you don't like, that you're disconnected from. Maybe health is a problem. Maybe you're overweight. Maybe you're having heart trouble. Maybe your cholesterol is up. Maybe you're just not feeling well on a daily basis. Maybe financial security is your biggest worry. Uh, if anything goes wrong, there's no financial buffer to see you through the day. Whatever those things are, your first action item is to list them. I want you to dig deep, be honest, throw them out on the table, and, and to yourself and to your goal buddy, discuss the things that are really close to your heart. That's where good goals come from. So the second action item is really turning those things into precise goals. How are you gonna address those things and how will you know that you've addressed them? So let's talk about some of those things. You know, going back to John, he wants to spend more time with family. That's the ultimate goal, right? He needs more profit to hire someone to spend more time with family. But what does spending more time with family mean? Is that five minutes every evening? Is that having your weekends free where your phone is off, you're not checking email and you're doing things with the family? I need you to define what spending more time with family means in very, very precise terms. Or work, for example. What's the problem with work? Are you not making enough money? How much money should you be making? Are you in a career or job that you don't like? What kind of career or job would you like? Get very specific, get very, very precise. Some people set goals, especially New Year resolutions, I'm gonna start eating healthy. What, what does that mean? What is eating healthy? It could mean completely different things to you and to me. So define exactly what you're gonna start eating. Are we talking about grilled fish every day and egg whites? Are you gonna, what, what are you gonna do? Start defining it. Same with financial security. What does financial security mean to you? Does it mean having $1,000 in the bank, 10,000, a million? You need to define these kind of things. So this entire video is really about setting precise goals that you care about. That's the secret to goal setting because these are goals you're gonna commit to and follow through on. So in closing, I want you to do these action items and I want you to do them with your goal buddy. And in reverse, the goal buddy should be doing these action items with you as well. List the negatives, discuss the negatives with the goal buddy, and drill down, help each other drill down until you get to specific, well-defined goals that address the negatives that you've listed in the first action item. When you've done that, go to the next video because the next part is where it gets exciting.